Now on the Business Radio X Network, just ask the gals. Social media solutions and education. This is a show that has got an enormous amount of attention, Ask the Gals, usually hosted by Jessica Badowski. But today it's special. I'm interviewing her. Hello, my name is Mark Bishop and welcome. And Two Busy Gals is a very, very interesting company who have a podcast called Ask the Gals. Jessica Badowski is the owner and founder of Tucson-based Two Busy Gals. Welcome, Jessica. Oh, thanks, Mark. I'm so glad that we get to do this interview. Instead of me interviewing guests, you're going to, people will get the whole story and be kind. I will be <laughs> very kind. Look, okay. after 20 years in nonprofit management, a lot of people have said to me, I'd love to know more about this, Jessica Badowski. She's quite interesting to listen to and so on. So that's why we're doing this. So after 20 years in nonprofit management and anti poverty social work, you must have a heart of gold. You decided to break out and start your own business. So what was the attraction then? So um, I always, I guess I was kind of a do-gooder for a long time. Um, I was really passionate about the work that I did. Uh, but I have a chronic health condition. And at the point I decided to start the company, I realized that it was not practical. Um, I'm the kind of person where if I can't give my all to something, I'm not just going to come in it, you know, and do a nine to five and say, hey, I did my nine to five, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the management positions I had just required traveling extensively across the country. They also required traveling weekly around an entire state. I was the deputy director of an association of, of organizations that were local. Yeah. And it was brutal. I mean, it just had gotten to the point where I was wrecking myself. And actually, at the time, my doctor, I kept going and saying, okay, so give me something. I joke around about Judy Garland. It's not funny, but people used to get pills from their doctors to be able to do <laughs> things, right? Elvis, sure. Judy Garland, you know, et cetera. Yeah. And I asked my doctor, do you know there's something you can give me so I can keep doing this? And she was like, no, there's not. You, you've you got to find other employment, another job, something else. Well, your, your resume, um, which I'm not going to go through now because it's too lengthy, too long, too involved, <laughs> and, and very, very well earned, I'm, I may say, and college, the whole bit. But in 2008, it became quickly apparent to you that the need for high-quality education and coaching social media services was exploding so this maybe was uh, meant to be, not so much we want to be ill to do it, but... No, but um, so at the time, my sister has some chronic health things, different things than I do. And the first year we were in business... What's the matter with you lot? Tell me. I, I don't know. We're <laughs> Is getting, it mom and dad? Or... <laughs> I don't know. We, we, there's a really funny joke about that, but... Okay. Um, yeah, we used to say our parents were in some experimental. <laughs> <laughs> they were in an experiment, experimental test in the 60s, and that's why their kids turned out this way. They weren't, but they were sort of mortified that we tell people Love that. you, Mom and Dad. Love you, don't I worry. do. We do. They, they listen. So, yeah, of course. Um, well, basically, when we started, we didn't say, hey, let's become social media consultants. I mean, think 2008. Instagram doesn't exist. Mm hmm uh, Twitter is out there. Uh, LinkedIn is out there, but it's only being used with people with their resumes to get jobs. Mm -hmm. Facebook is out there, but it's there's no business access. There's no way right. to use it as a business. So it's not like we said, hey, we're tech people. We're going to go do this. Hey, we're marketing people. Let's jump on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We actually were running just small level businesses. My sister sold Mary Kay. We went to Pink Cadillac School, we like to say. <laughs> um, I was doing jewelry parties. People may remember 2008 was not a great year to le leave a nice job with retirement and health benefits um, mm. because the whole economy went flippity floppity, right? Well, this is it. But but you had a health condition to also consider. Exactly. So the, I admire you because of this, because a lot of people, you know, it's all for you well to have degrees and be top dog and this and that and work and have your health and everything's great in life and you're working in these great corporate roles. Life changes, things change. If you lose your health, sometimes you have to think about, gee, I've got to find a way to bring a buck in. You know what I mean? Right. Or and some quality of life. And some quality of life. Add to that. So right. yeah. I think it was after three years of working with national partners uh, in marketing and social media, Two Busy Girls began developing its own roster of clients. Exactly. So the first six or nine months we were in business, we were, you know, you schlep your stuff around, right? This mm -hmm. is the schlepping mm -hmm. season, right? Everybody's got a craft fair and a fundraiser. <laughs> and we were like, what the heck are we doing? Are we crazy? You know, we've got 
baskets of product wrapped beautifully and we can sell them out of the trunk of our car. I kid you not. You know, yeah. we, you name it, we did it. You know, we were at, we were somewhere and we great were. Great training, great training. Well, it was, it was great training to say, can you talk about the product? Can you talk to strangers? Mm -hmm. Can you convince someone to buy it? Right. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's right there. Mm -hmm. um, but people started saying, well, you use Facebook. How do you use Facebook for this? And we were using Twitter really to research best business practices. We were following business leaders, so we mm. were using it as a research tool. Interesting. And people said, well, could you help us use it for business? So that whole nonprofit career, yada, yada, um, I trained, I wrote curriculum. That's what I did, right? On yep. Pick a topic. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, well, you know how to train. Everybody says you know how to talk, yak, yak. You know, Mark and I are good talkers. <laughs> we never meet strangers. And so I thought, well... People invited us to speak at some women's groups, networking groups, not big like chambers, more small groups. And they said, wow, we could really use your help. So we went to um, a national conference. And at the national conference were some of these major marketing companies. And they were hiring people on their rosters, right? Okay. So they right. contractors. They weren't hiring employees, but contractors. And we got to write the content and manage campaigns for large, large businesses, people in the out there uh, listening to us would recognize. Unfortunately, half of them are under NDA contracts, which is what always happens when you work for another marketing company. Mm -hmm. um, but the one I can I can say, and people can figure out, is if they've ever been to Disneyland, there's this lovely shop where you can get soup in a bread bowl, and the bread bowl looks like Mickey. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you who it is, I but you, in Disneyland. if you've been to Disneyland, you'll know about them, and they're all up and down uh, the West Coast. Post. And for about 18 months, every tweet, every Facebook post, every picture, every piece of content for their social media campaigns came out of our offices. That's pretty cool. It now, was really cool. That was then. We're talking 2008. Let's yep. jump into now, all right? What about current clientele now? Or clientele, whichever way you like to pronounce it. Clientele sounds very posh. Um, so we... This is the one thing I think... I guess you, it ranges quite a bit, right? It ranges too much. Mm -hmm. So I actually am announcing some stuff here, breaking news, people Ooh. don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the... I've had a, a mentor on and off for about five years in Tucson. Uh, he primarily invests in... Uh, biotech industries, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. But at one point he pulled me into a company that was in the process of launch. They were in beta. They'd had their first round of funding to do marketing. Um, and so we struck up a friendship there. And his main, every time I would meet with him, he'd say, I don't know who to refer you to because I feel like you're just too broad. Like, I, you know, I meet CEOs and I'm like, oh, she does social media. Like, that doesn't yeah, right. make any sense. Yeah. It's, it's hard to explain sometimes, I know. Yeah. That. So what basically what we know with our clientele, so just to give you some examples, um, we do have international clientele. We have worked with a citrus grower and distribution company. The growers on the Mexican side, the distribution mm -hmm. is, is down in Nogales. Mm -hmm. uh, we work on a, with a really lovely client company. It's an, I believe she's an expat who lives in Morocco. Um, a wonderful American girl. That her and her sister started a company, Mushmina. Oh, I think I've seen that. That's the artisan uh, e-commerce. Beautiful that, uh, stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Gorgeous. From Morocco. Lovely. Yes. Is the local manufacturing company, is that the one with the, uh, the fruit? <gasps> Uh, the other local manufacturing company actually uh, is quite sizable here in Tucson, and they produce uh, temporary tattoos and stickers, and the manufacturing plant's actually here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've done that. We've we work with a lot of we've worked with nonprofits, of course. Um, but what we're finding is we really want to find something where people say, instead of just, oh, social media, you talk to two busy gals, that we're really hitting some targeted industries. So we have some pilot tests right now. Mm -hmm. uh, one is with medical marijuana dispensaries, mm -hmm. which have compliance issues. Um, because marijuana, is, even medical marijuana, is not ubiquitous across the country. That's right. The marketing platforms, like you can't market it on Facebook. You can have an account, but you can't ever pay for any advertising. Because and, yet, and yet you see all the CBD oils exactly and, and totally flip on that right i mean it's gone nuts on it's on, gone nuts on, on that. social media absolutely you know? and it varies because i know a lot of people are getting no results out of it and i know some are getting amazing, amazing results, results out of it, out of it. Yeah, yes it's, uh, someone asked me and they said well did you try it and i said yeah and they said did it work i said yeah but not any better quicker or different than an ibuprofen mm. and so 
to pay fifty dollars for this jar of lotion or two ninety nine for some ibuprofen, you know, yeah, I'm know and again. for me, I'm getting the same results. I know other people who it has been life changing for them, and mm-hmm. I, that's why I'm a big proponent of try stuff and see if well, it you improves your life. You never right? know. Who's the best selling author? You do. Oh, um, so the best-selling author that we have, she has uh, two New York Times bestsellers. She's a business coach. So um, she's based in San Francisco. And her company works with the C-suite, so uh, CEOs of Fortune 200 companies. So you're flexible enough to where your clients don't have to be right here in Tucson. No. They can be all over the place. They can be all over the place. In fact, the business started in Ohio, and we had clients all over the country. And then we moved the business to Arizona. It took us about 18 months to figure out Tucson, like the market here, how mm-hmm. to penetrate the market here. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're pretty established now. We do have people, they just come up and they say, I asked who I was supposed to get, and everybody says it's you. Well, two busy gals, very active in the local Tucson business community. Uh, just as a bit of an idea, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, um, currently you're working with legacy partners of Local First Arizona, uh, strategic partners with uh, the Tucson Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Morana Chamber of Commerce, Vale Chamber of Commerce, charity, volunteer work has been a passion of yours too, a passion of yours, and really it's a central part, isn't it, it seems yes. to be, of two busy girls of the business model. Absolutely. Um why why is that do you think what is it that pulls you into that so when we started our business we made some good decisions and some bad decisions right everybody does one of the challenges was we because we didn't believe in ourselves i can be frank about that we just didn't believe in ourselves so you would go to things and they would bring in someone and they'd say hi i'm the uh, purple wizard coach and i've got this purple wizard sales you know Mm -hmm. system And, you know, if you come for the next piece is $100 and then you go to the next training, it's $100. And they say, well, but if you really want to work with me for four months, it's $2,000, it's $3,000. And we didn't have the money to invest, but we thought we don't know anything about business. So maybe we should invest in this stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so so, we learned things along the way. But what we found out was um, we wanted to always be able to give back because we didn't find a lot of people who gave to us when we started our business. So we were passionate, not just about working with charities specifically, but also for always, we save some space in our business model. So the lady who's just starting, the Avon lady who's got 20 bucks and can't afford our coaching price of $100 an hour, Mm -hmm. we don't turn them away. No. Well, that's good. We don't talk about it because it's not important to talk about. But, you know, it's, you know, but on the other hand, we can't do 100 ladies at $20. You know, I mean, that'd go out of business. I understand implicitly. I mean, I run a business. It's right. my business. And the reality is I have clients that just can't afford, although I'm so cheap, it doesn't matter. You could fall right. out the door. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But I help them. So it's my way of paying right. forward. You know, if you knew someone um, was going to, yeah, if you know some, I mean? if you knew someone would be great as a, on a podcast, you might have them back more than once as a guest because then they could at least use that. Yeah. So formally, um, with charities that we've worked with, uh, the last couple years, the main one we've worked with is um, Big Hearts Helping Hand Arizona Secret Santa Program, hmm. and that is not affiliated with any large charity that you would be aware of. This is very much a kitchen table grassroots. Hmm. Donate toys. Uh, there's specific lists. The kids write a letter to Santa, and so you get to see their letter to Santa, and then you mm-hmm. buy a couple things on it. Mm-hmm. Um, my kids in our house, I have two wonderful, most of the time, teenagers, and part of every dollar they earn has to go to donation. So I, I it's some percentage. I don't know. 10%. Well, it's interesting because I want to ask you this. I had, yeah. a, I had a guest in the other day on a show, on a Tucson Means Business show, yeah. uh, a lovely lady here that owns, uh, her name is Cecily. Uh, Uriza Fort, and she is the CEO and owner of Single Focus Web. Mm-hmm. It's an unusual company because they only deal in not for profits, mm-hmm. and she specializes in that. And some of the work they do is stunning in reference to sure. on air and building, designing sites. But, but of course, for a lot of it for, for, for fundraising is donation, you know, right. e commerce that way. How does a social media component tag to that? How, would, how do you help these non-for-profits sure. that you work with? So two things. One, we literally adopt families in that every year. It's a family project. My kids um, 
part of all the money they earn uh, is they have to allocate a certain amount to donation and they can pick where they donate it. So we actually go out and buy the presents. How do we help with social media would be um, the page for that charity has they get permission from the family. So they have a picture of Johnny and they have Johnny's uh, letter to Santa and it says he'd like a scooter. He'd like some new sheets for his bed. He'd like it one year, like a lot of kids asked for sheets. It was very Mm. I don't know, very humbling and kind of disheartening at the same time, you know, (laughs) like you don't want the the charities very clear to the parents like, you know, we're not giving you, you know, video game systems. And these this is these donations. People are adopting your kid to buy the presents and they're regular working families that are adopting. So, you know, um, and this year she's instituting. I think it's one thing to read, one thing to wear, one thing to play with. But how do you help on social media? So how we helped on social media was she had an abundance two years ago. She had so many people ask for help that she didn't have enough people volunteering. So she needed people to volunteer. So how did we help with that? We were able to promote and share you saw before you were saying oh we're partners with all these chambers of commerce we're a legacy partner with local first Mm -hmm. so we went to local first and i said here's how it works um if you've got you know you want to give me 20 bucks i mean because people know i mean that i was actually going to buy the stuff so they know me well enough it wasn't like i was passing a hat but it was like hey if you can either sponsor a kid if you can buy the stuff if you want to buy the stuff and meet me if you want me to be your shopper Mm -hmm. how do you want me to do this Mm -hmm. and so i was able to use my leverage my reputation with organizations that we were in Mm-hmm. Um, and show that we could be the legs and arms. Or so, so how does the social media work with that? Do you because, tell stories? Sure, like we're showing the pictures. We're showing. So, in other words, how you even find the kid to adopt is on her Facebook page. Okay, so yes. everything is Trey Sue. That's yeah. interesting. That's very interesting. And then, the, ideally, she likes the families to take a picture of the kids with the item, and that also is a secondary point of verification that hey, the kid really got it. Yeah, right. 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 Because there's there's scandalous people out there. Oh, big time. Tell yeah. me about. About it. Right? Guess what? E-Women Network, you're a foundation sponsor and partners yes. with big hearts, as you said. Mm-hmm. Um, E-Women Network now, how is that doing in town? Oh, it's doing wonderful. They have a new managing director, Carol Johnson. Um, we've been part, E-Women was the first professional organization we joined. So way back when, when we were selling purses and jewelry mm-hmm. and Mary Kay, <laughs> we found out about E-Women and we joined it. And okay. the founder of E-Women is, grew up in Dayton, Ohio. So she would come to Ohio. So we got to meet the founder of this international wow, networking cool. organization, Sandra Yancey. Sure. So we've always stayed members of it. Pardon me. Um, it's at different times. It served different purposes for us as a business, which I think is is a great resource for an organization that you pay dues to. Right. So sometimes it got us leads. Sometimes it got us professional development. Right now, it's a very nice for me once a month to take a moment and pause, have a lovely lunch, hear a speaker. Mm-hmm. raise a little money so mm-hmm. we how we support the foundation is we regularly donate raffle prizes um, and then we purchase raffle tickets and so all of the money from the raffle goes to the foundation which picks a national charity and we also send a young woman entrepreneur from Tucson to the National Convention of E-Women Network so that they can get a nice the kind of sponsoring yeah. things we all collectively say we would have wanted if we were trying to be an entrepreneur in our 20s. That's fantastic Two Busy Girls was actually established in 2008, as we've discussed in Ohio, moved to Arizona 2011. And it was established as a business-to-business service provider after multiple requests for assistance with social media that you mentioned before. People saying, look, you can do that, but can you help us do that? Exactly. Branding, marketing from, you know, peer business owners. Was that a good time, Would do you think, Jessica, for this industry to be understood or was it just a fledgling nothing in those days so early adopters right in technology we talk about early adopters that's your that's when you go to the, ho- the holidays are coming up right so that's at thanksgiving we'll, we'll get a touch on that a bit later. oh yeah right. but the early adopter will have the iphone 11 right they always you go to you go to the holidays you go to the family reunion mm-hmm. they're the one that has the latest iPhone. Uh, They have the Apple Watch before anybody has the Apple Watch. They're on the list for the Tesla, right? They they get the newest, the shiniest technology first, right? 
So in technology, we call those first adopters. And what first adopters do is they're sort of the trendsetters. And it doesn't matter. It's not always young people. I have a 77-year-old uncle who's a, who is an early adopter because he's been in tech forever, right? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean your age range. It's someone that's just tech savvy and wants the new thing. Mm-hmm. So those folks were already using social media at that point, right? Those businesses were using it. They were seeing the opportunity. They could see the writing on the wall. I think because we were out with small businesses, they were like, what do you mean you use that for business? We're like, well, we do this with it and we do that with it. (laughs) And keep in mind, at the beginning, we're doing that all for free. Oh, could you come show me how to use it? Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and then at a certain point, I went, why am I hawking lipsticks and bracelets? Mm -hmm. We should be selling this. You should be explaining and and being paid for it. Exactly. Even if you start small. Right. Even if you start. It's a service. Exactly. You know. So, and that's when we went out and worked for those marketing companies for three years and got paid, you know, an hourly rate, sometimes a per client rate, sometimes a per word rate that you wrote. That was insane. God love my sister who wrote those blogs, but you Mm -hmm. got paid by word. And I was like, okay, this is nuts. We can't keep doing this. Yeah, right. (laughs) You know, so (laughs) that was, (laughs) that was crazy. Um, she was great at it, but that was a, that was kind of a crazy time in the business. And so we've experienced a lot of that, right? We've experienced you're working on something and then they keep wanting as a contractor to make it lower, lower, lower. Yeah, you right. know? We've experienced all of that. Um, but I can distinctly remember the exact moment when I first heard about Pinterest. I was in Washington, D.C. It would have been about 2009. I pre- yeah, probably because I think I lived here already when I went there. Um And it was just sort of this idea that was just in beta and some people were getting invited to it. And everyone was like, do you think it'll last? Right. Mm. I remember before Instagram. Like here comes another one. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's like, hmm, so is this going to, how is this going to work? Why would people use this? What about this appeals to people? So I think. If you go back to all the nonprofit life, you know, being doing social advocacy, kind of social work type work. I mean, I was never a licensed social worker, full Mm -hmm. disclosure, but doing that kind of work. Mm -hmm. I was always curious about people. Why do people do what they do? Why do they choose this? Whatever the this is, why do they choose it? Like Mm -hmm. in a very existential kind of woo-woo space. You You would have been a good psychiatrist, actually. Probably. I think I would have been good at you that. Know, just, I'll just sort of throw that in. All right. All right. I mean, your education was there. Just, uh, <laughs> but you're doing it in life anyways. Right. If you're going to do it in life, I should be billing for these hours. Um, That's but high, yeah. Exactly. But what I realized was people use social media. There's patterns. And we can see if you sell, if you're a business. I, I just met a lady at luncheon today. Beautiful location. In fact, we should invite her for a show to talk. She's got stories, goo gobs of stories. But she was talking about her daughters have a product and they're trying to sell their product. Mm-hmm. She said, well, they want someone to take pictures of the product. Do you do that? And I thought, well, I hear what her pain point is, right? They want someone to just take pictures of their product. We don't know. But I mean, we don't take the pictures, but I've got six photographers I could have come take pictures. What they really want is someone to promote their product. And so I sat there and said, well, what you're trying to do is build what we call social proof of product, which means I have this jar of pickles and I say, this is my great grandmother's recipe and they're the best pickles in the world. And I want to sell it at Walmart and Costco, wherever, right? So maybe I start here and Rincon Market takes it. And maybe I start here and I sell it at farmer's markets, right? And while I'm selling these great pickles, but I really want to get to Walmart or, you know, Kroger or Fry. I want to get, right? Like, I can't just be schlepping these cases of pickles I know, but you and a hundred others, you know, and they all want front front shelf. Exactly. Back shelf if you've only got half a budget. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There's a whole thing to that, too. You You get to pay. We're working with a company that distributes... Uh, you know, the person with grandma's pickles, they're the distributor that has the relationships. You want to go and give free product away for a day, you pay $500 for the privilege plus the product to give it away. But I got to ask you this, all right? I'm just coming out of left field with this question, right? Seeing you touched on this, because I know another friend of mine, well, you know her, Jennifer. Yes. uh, You know, working hard, she's producing her with a partner now, she's producing her own little... I mean, there are so many things out there. Can everybody make it? I mean, you well, know. I mean, I think you have to. When just, does it stop? How many jams? How many this? How many that? You know? Well, I think we have to decide, right? So you're never going to be Smuckers. You're never going to be Welches, right? You're just not. That's me. I'm very practical. Okay. A lot of people are like, I, you're just not. The days of becoming tied are is almost impossible, right? Right. The way and when tied became tied, it wasn't like it is now. 
So the example I can give is there's a local gentleman. Um, he owned a cookie manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to be, at the time when they were doing it, they were like Keebler, Nabisco, Acme. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what his no. company was called, right? <laughs> but that's what he was trying to do, right? Like he was like, I'm going to be the third brand. And then he realized, and this was 20 years ago, yeah, right. there's no space for that. You know where there was space for him to make a ton of money? He made a couple cookie, just a couple basic cookie recipes. But if you went into CVS and you bought the cookie, it said it was CVS brand. If you went into Walmart, it was Walmart brand. If you went into, okay. right? So yeah. you kind of have to see where you fit. And I think just be realistic. Well, this Lottie do. Dottie, I'm going to be famous, the next famous person. And I'm going to have I'm a million all for dollars. It. Please don't get me wrong. I'm all for somebody having a shot. <laughs> have a go. Uh, it's your heart's passion that you dream it's your goal i just you know i just wonder this how many sources can there be how many jams can there be right how many you know and everybody's trying to flog them at the markets on a weekend and yes um there was a wonderful show today in fact that uh, uh stephanie rising oh uh, yes i was well, hungry she had a wonderful show <laughs> on today with three fabulous ladies in the food business doing awesome U stuff unique food business and also and you know they're doing exceptionally well but a lot of their comments are from visitors to tucson a lot of visitors snowbirds god knows what and Gee, w this is lovely. We don't have this in Wisconsin. Right. We don't have this here where, or there where or somewhere you? else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could think on, on the face of it, you know, there is room. Boy, right. if I could get my product over there. Uh, and this is where social media is. See, online. Online, there is no borders, right? Online, there's no borders. So while I'm running around with my cases of pickles, <laughs> right, I want to get every one of those people. You, There are no pickles. My grandmother didn't have a pickle recipe. I just picked that as an example. Okay. So just to be clear, I don't – well, we have made pickles. Pickles, it doesn't come out as – you really have to pay attention to that recipe. Oh, you think it'd be man. easy, but it's not. I mean, the process is easy, but the spicing isn't. Uh, at any rate, so I'm running around. I'm hawking all this stuff, and I think my brand looks good, right? And I've got this picture, vintage picture of my grandmother in the farm, right? And I think the recipe is yeah. great, and I trademarked the recipe, right? And mm -hmm. I'm copywriting what my brand looks like, and I've got all those ducks in a row. How am I going to use social media? How I'm going to use social media is when I'm sitting at that farmer's market, I either need an intern, a kid from college, a kid from high school, a neighbor kid, or my kid – with a smartphone while I'm hawking my, you know, pickles, mm -hmm. doing a Facebook Live interview with the person saying this is the best pickles they've ever ate and they drive 30 miles to get these pickles and whatever else, right? Mm -hmm. I need to make sure it's easy. All for right, now I understand that. Hold yep. it. Whoa, whoa, boy, come here. I understand that. And that would look fabulous. It's there. It's live. It's mm -hmm. in the now. And a, but a, bu so a buyer has just said, wow, yep. but you could have paid them. No one knows. True. But they could think that. But here's the deal. Now, I forgot what I was going to ask you. Um, who sees it? Who sees it, and who do you get it out to? Well, here's the part that you have to decide what your end goal is. Is my end goal that I'm trying to sell a million jars of grandma's pickles at farmer's markets, and I need people to find me? Or am I trying to convince the retail buyer at Walmart, Costco, Kroger, that these are the best damn pickles, and they need to have them in their store? Yes, but the only way they're going to have them in the store, and tell me if I'm wrong, is when enough people come in and ask them, are you stocking these? Because I love these, and I'm telling you, they're selling Mark, everywhere. Mark, you're and in 19. Really? Yes. Well, I'd do my job. I'd want to find out where I'd find this thing if it's so good that everybody's yes, buying. Yes, but here's what you we think. Most of the stores don't even determine what gets put in the store. There's a very complex process where retail buyers in the corporate office have divisions and regions, and mm. that retail buyer decides. Well, that's it, isn't it? That's all changed. I understand that. Yeah. You will put like, in the store what we tell you to put in the store. Period. And we will tell you what shelf it goes on in a planogram and what it looks like. Yeah, right. So how do I get that retail buyer to believe that I've got these great pickles? Well, they're not even going to meet with me to see a case of pickles unless I can show them social proof of product. Social proof of product is why you do tastings, you go out to these festivals, mm -hmm. why you sell stuff at the farmer's market, mm -hmm. because I want to have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people on my page every day talking about how much they love these pickles. 
Not because that's not going to make Mary in Wisconsin. Mary in Wisconsin might find the pickles and she might not. Mm -hmm. But that only matters if I want to ship pickles to Wisconsin and pay for shipping. There you go. Right? And then it's got to be worthwhile you're doing it. Yes. I get your point. It's it's, it's a complex scenario, but we're going to touch a little bit more on that. Um, If I was introducing you to somebody, okay, who's got a business and I've said, listen, uh, I use Ask the Gals, you've got to talk to these, well, too busy gals, you've got to talk to these guys, they're the best in the business, and, you know, they'll do everything. And he says, well, in effect, uh, what does too busy gals allow me to do, Jessica? Sure. So we feel that we do one thing amazingly well. And it is help you craft content. So your content is what you write, the pictures, the video. We help you craft the content that links what you're doing on social media to what it is you're trying to sell. Is that a service? Is that a product? So it's more than, yes, could we come in and show a person how to post on Instagram every day? Of course. And show them how to step by step go through it. Most business owners don't need to be spending their precious time doing that every day. Well, this is what I thought. I mean, I I thought the priority was to where you're going to help me with my business by allowing me to get on with my business. Right. I haven't got time to sit here and play twiddly winks with all this jazz. Exactly. But I can't help you get... No offense, man. You know what I mean? No. But I can't help you get on with your business if you can't clearly articulate who your customer is, Mm -hmm. what your sales goal is, the product or service you're selling... And describe your ideal customers. So once I've done all of that and we've worked that all out, yep. then you can go to town. Yep. And then I can get on with doing other stuff. Exactly. All right, because that's pretty important to us. And lot we're going to drive what our, what should be happening is social media should be driving traffic to your website yes. or to a landing page or somewhere where you convert your lead into a, a hotter lead mm-hmm. into closed business. You're listening to Ask the Gals. It's a podcast dedicated to the industry of IT and social media and what it can do for you. It's been running nearly a year now, very successful, and a lot of listeners to the show, hosted by Jessica Badowski, and they're here in Tucson, Arizona, but with clients all over the place. No matter where you hear this, you can always track her down. What was your inspiration or your reason? For starting well, we Too talked, Busy Gals. We I talked mean, a little bit. You had a full-time gig, yep. I know, but, uh, you know. I also think I had reached a point where I was really tired of people I worked for or with questioning my pursuit of excellence as wanting to take their job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The jealous bit. Yeah. And the non worker see. And where you aren't even, you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And they're like, you're so competitive. And I'm like, with who? (laughs) Like, who am I competing? Not in an arrogant way. Like, I don't even know what you mean. Like, I'm the person, you know, so my sister, who's. Welcome to my world, baby. Right. Hey, what's it like co founding a business with your sister while we're. Well, I have a lot more gray hair than when we started, (laughs) but maybe that's just because I've gotten older. Uh, Um, I'll say this. She is a wonderful, there's a, I'm sure you've heard of it, Mark. There's a personality test and lots of businesses have you take it. It's called DISC and it's D-I-S-C. And it, I don't know what the, I don't remember, but you know, one's like you're intuitive and one is like you sign the contract right away. You know what pisses me off about these tests, to be Hmm. honest with you? They're they're designed and created by professors. They've never worked a bloody day in their lives or (laughs) gone out in the street or sold a thing, right? Sold a thing or done any damn thing because I did many of those I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. If I have to haul my car around on Christmas Eve (laughs) to gas stations and barber shops with wrapped gift bags for Christmas in my car and walk in cold to places we don't know people and sell stuff, I'd have rather have nobody by my side than my sister. Jessica, what's the oddest thing that ever happened? happened to you that oh, when you were managing a social media my account. gosh yeah this is hysterical so there is a company i don't even know if they're still in business it was a restaurant chain back east it was similar to like um costa vida or chipotle it was called salsa rita we don't have them out here and it wasn't a very large it was a regional chain it sounds like a dance on dancing with the stars right <laughs> and but it was that similar kind of you go in an order and they put it together okay. so they okay. decided to have um So they were very popular. They uh, had some locations on campuses where, so in olden days, you had to have cash when I went on campus, but now their ID, you can swipe and buy food. Like there's money on your ID and it Mm -hmm. works to buy Mm -hmm. food. 
And so they were very popular. Um, I guess they had these burritos. Okay. And so all these people would post and tag and be like, it was the best food to get after a night of binge drinking and oh, getting high oh, and stuff. High and, all this jazz. and so you couldn't really like repost that you or engage with that content. Yes, they, um, I don't think it was just girls. I what think about it was sliders? Guys. What about sliders? Didn't you enjoy those? Uh, no. Yeah. Not, no. Okay. Well, uh, all right. well, I wasn't personally doing this. This is what they were putting on social media. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. So. Um, anyways, we were having, so when you do social, when you craft a brand, you have a brand voice, right? So sometimes like the brand voice for you, Mark is Mark Bishop, right? Like you're mm-hmm. the brand voice, literally you're the voice, mm-hmm. but you, it's very clear what the voice is. But sometimes if I sit down with the pickle company, it's like, is it grandma's voice? Are we writing like an old timey style? Is it, I'm the new hip kid that wants to bring grandma's pickle recipe? Like who's the voice, okay. right? And you can always tell when companies, even big marketing companies with large budgets are struggling with that because you, if you watch a commercial, you read it, you're like, who are they targeting this to? Like who's talking to me, right? Mm-hmm. I understand. Right? So the funniest thing that happened with Salsa Rita was we so had convinced created this not ever giving the person a name or anything but the brand voice was so strong that um it regularly got asked out for dates <laughs> so they would message and be like you sound really cool we should get together and call for a date and my sister would turn and go what is with these wackos? Like, what are they doing? I mean, it wasn't like it. It wasn't like it. You know, um, it wasn't like Mister Clean, right? Or the Brawny. Yeah, right. right, right there right. was no person. It was just the way the communication went, and it was so clear yeah. that they wanted a date. So I would say that's the oddest thing that ever happened managing oh, no, no, no. social media. Have you ever worked with anyone famous? So. I suppose it depends what you d- consider famous. So we did work for a while with a client. Um, she uh, worked with Dr. Drew on Celebrity Rehab. She's a, a psychologist, and she works in the field of addiction, Sherry Gaba. And so we worked for a long time with her. She's another author that we, we've worked with a number of authors. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we worked with her on social media. We worked with her on some curriculum development and sort of some other creating really heavy-duty content creation, mm-hmm. not just a post to go online. Content's everything, isn't it? Content is everything. Mm-hmm. By the sounds of it. Well, and you don't just have to create it yourself. If you're really good at curating content, so a lot of people have said, why don't we write trainings and blogs? And I said, well, everyone and their brother writes something about social media, right? I mean, from the big guys, Harvard mm-hmm. Business Review, Inc., Fast Company, right, right. you know, Forbes, to Joe Blow down the street that wants you to come to his luncheon, right? Everybody's writing something. <laughs> For me. That's why they can't get jobs. It's still, now, listen, seriously, this software yeah. out now. That just about eliminates having to do any of your own content. It does it all. That you know that, right? Right. It's getting right up there now. I mean, everything's just so easy, right? Yeah. I still can't work the stuff. Otherwise, I'd do more. But I, right. you know, I don't have that, but that side brain. The other thing is, it's not going to sound like you. Well, there's stuff that supposedly is. If they get uh, that AI tell, you, interface, you couldn't tell the difference. How about that? Well, I will say, humanly, people can't tell the difference. We've managed brands where people thought it was the news anchor talking, and it wasn't, and mm-hmm. they thought it was her. What a no lot. one ever knew that they outsourced it. Artificial intelligence is around the corner. I'm yes, but I'll be retired by then, so it's fine. <laughs> I might be retired by next year. Well, truthfully. it's your eleventh year in business now. I know. Uh, what trends have you seen over the last decade in social media? I mean, what were predictions that didn't come true? What was unexpected? So you may have noticed recently, Facebook's in a little trouble in the news for not being completely, shall we say, truthful with their data. Well, they've made the money. If they were smart, they'd get in line right now. Yeah. They made their money. So about 2006, probably about 2000, easy 2006, we go to workshops, right? We go to stuff to keep up on yeah. trends, right? You know, so all we the, all the time, all the time, because that then we break it down for business owners and we've got to keep on top of it. Well, that's it. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about a small business, which you are. Right. Right. It's all very well having clients and all this jazz, but you've got to stay ahead of the game. Absolutely. And you've got to go to specific functions. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, what do they call them these days? Uh, well, there's conferences, there's online events you have to go to, but it's because the because the platforms are 
are always changing. You're in a constant, rapid mode. I can't just keep making grandma's pickle recipe, right? Oh, right, right. So you got to stay up with the no matter. I got to get the new thing, right? So, um, but- and then and then when you've got to figure it out, when the, when you do learn what's new, you've got to be able to figure it out how yes. to translate it into that specific business now. Exactly. After you've just maybe done last year, how often do you need? I know with a website, uh, Cecily was saying about every uh, three to four years. You should really solidly update a website and stay on top of it. Now, what about social media? Well, you're kind of forced, right? So partially, you want to look at um, trends change over time. So the one trend that I think did not come true, and I absolutely knew Facebook was lying about it, and I told people in our classes, I said, yeah. So everybody's like, video, 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 Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. I do not care for how I look on video. I have a very expressive face. Apparently, that's wonderful in life. Mm -hmm. I feel it looks like two caterpillars have crawled on my face Mm -hmm. and are having some sort of convulsions Mm -hmm. because I feel like my eyebrows are all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I'm uncomfortable on video. And because I'm uncomfortable, then I feel like my message gets lost because I... I want to sit and keep my face very still. Like I want to go... I wouldn't... I'm not a Botox girl, but if I was, I'd get... My face wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. Well, that wouldn't be talking to Jessica, right? Everybody's like, you know, I'm flamboyant. Like, even here, you guys can't see me, but my my hands are moving everywhere as if yeah, you could yeah. see me. Yeah, you've got to be you. I know that, but... Uh, right? So, what I said to people was... But the numbers are so prolific these no, days. No, Facebook lied about them. The lawsuit came out. No, but, com- but not just Facebook. Generically. Yes. In, in lots of platforms, it's proven that video increases enormous sales, for starters, uh, openings to look at the darn thing on your email. I love video. I watch videos, right? Not necessarily where Jessica has to host the video. Right. You can use but, cartoons these sure. days. You can use all sorts of jazz. So here's what we tell people. So 2006, if you don't do video, your business is going to be dead. 2007, if you don't have video, your business is going to be dead. 2008, if you don't have video, your business is going to be dead. One, most of the platforms over-exaggerated the results from videos. How I knew that Mm -hmm. was because we did videos. We did them. Mm -hmm. And I knew nobody was watching our video, but Facebook kept telling me hundreds of people were opening and viewing it. But, But don't they have to have proof? Don't they have to show analytics? Sure, but if you write the algorithm for the analytics, this was solved in a lawsuit. They just had a lawsuit where it's entire, it really up, it turned my industry upside down because people who wrote content were fired and just complete divisions wiped out in advertising agencies where they brought in all these video people. Okay. And there's just recently been a lawsuit where it turned out the numbers were not accurate. That's not the main... I mean, I knew that when it was happening because I could just tell. I was like, no this, no 500 people watched this video of this lady on her page. She has 50 followers. What 500 people? And they didn't sit and watch this. Yeah. I mean, it just... You could tell if you'd been in the industry that the numbers were inflated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My point is this. Some people would be horrific on a podcast, right? They're, you know, they're, you know, you, you've had them, I'm sure. You've had Mm -hmm. guests where you're like, oh, don't let them talk too long. I had 40 years in the game too. Right? I've interviewed a lot of people. Yeah. And believe me, uh, you meet a lot of people like that, but, um, uh, it's a shame because you'd like to help them more. You right. Know? I'd love to see them become better. So here's what we know. If you're uncomfortable or it doesn't present your best side. It's not going to help your business. Okay. Now, you're right. You okay. can do this cartoons. This is the argument. This is, the, this is what you're putting up. And I right. understand this. Right. This has to be of value. Is this a way that you're, and do your customers watch video? Mm-hmm. Don't presume all your customer base watches video. So you need to know your customer demographic well enough. You need to do some A-B market testing sure. to know, is my, is my customer base a video customer base? Well, I'm going through that right now because I'm an audio-based pl- yep. platform, right? And we go all over the place, and we've sure. got terrific numbers now. Excellent numbers. Verified. Crazy numbers. I know. It's been marvelous since we've opened it for Tucson. But here's the deal. I've got a lot of people asking me to do video. Sure. And I say, okay, why? Because, oh, well, we, you know, we've got to have video. You've got to be out there on YouTube. You've got to be on Vimeo. You've got to be on this. You've got to be on that. And I think, God, I don't know which way to go now. So we're going to do some split testing here. We're going to work this out. I'm going to have some clients that are going to say, no, thanks. And they're going to run a mile. I don't want video. Right. And I'm going to have other clients that say, oh, I'd like to have video, you know. Okay, have you asked your clients who your guests you're going to have on? That's another point. Right. Now, you know, it's just one of those things. You're not sure which way to go. 
Um, but I'm a great believer of video. I got to tell you, I think. It oh, I think it's a great tool. I just don't think it's a great tool for all businesses for and all, all businesses. business owners and all products. Well, this is the thing, and, and this is where TV still hangs on a little. You know what I mean? They've got that opportunity to at least show a bit of video of what your product is. Oh, absolutely. You know, from that point of view. Absolutely. Um, okay, so uh, this November episode of Ask the Gals was going to be you doing something special. You've got some special people coming up in the future. We do. On the show. And I'm going to tell you something very nice, which which is nice. About me? About your business. Oh, okay. Which is you. I like nice things about me. Okay. And, and your team. Here's the deal. I was visiting somewhere the other day, uh, one of my sponsors. We were having a cup of coffee together, and I was, uh, surprisingly, uh, at the bar having a cup of coffee. And uh, this guy said I to need me, video. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I said, oh, good, Jack. What's new? He said, gee, I love that show you got on your channel there. I said, well, which one? We've got a right. lot. Right. We have a lot. There's said, a lot here. The one my daughter, uh, she listens to it. She learned, oh, the one with the gals who teach all that social media jazz. Yes. Uh, Yes, of course. You mean Jessica and the team with us? Yeah. The girls. He said she absolutely loves the show because she's learning from it. Absolutely. I said, well, what a thing. Because we used to do on the old KVO I days, if you sure. remember. Yeah. We, we do some testing and stuff like that. And um, you can do this. So I think if you can teach more, sure. you know, on your podcast as well, Absolutely. I think it's going to really, um, you know, uh, pull in a lot more listeners as well. Because we just want to have a really good mix, too, of like know. interesting guests. Well, so, you do. You do. Yeah. And then kind of how are they using social media and then talking about it. So I got to tell you, Jessica, me, like a lot of guys, were hopeless in certain areas of that. Um it's very frustrating to be in a small business. You don't have a lot of staff. You're watching Absolutely. your overheads. You're trying to get ahead. You're watching your overheads as it is. And you know darn well you need social media and you need it to be excellent for your, yes. for your small business. And I tell you, it's extremely frustrating. I was lucky to find you. I was extremely lucky to find you. People have to really do their research and understand what they, what they want. Yeah. Somebody like you has got to understand what they're saying. Sure. Because I speak to guys, and I say, you know what, I, 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 I tried to tell them and it sort of went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> and they looked at me with this blank face sure. look, you know. So I don't know what to do. So how, I think, if anybody's listening now and you really want some support, you know, get to Jessica. How can they contact you? What's sure. the best way? So the easiest way is um, the good news is our name, Two Busy Gals, T-O-O, Busy Gals. If you type that in any search engine, the whole first page, it's going to be our website. It's going to be Facebook. It's going to be LinkedIn. Everything is at Two Busy Gals or backslash Two Busy Gals. So it's very easy to find us. Um, duh, that's duh, what's a backslash? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you a really funny story. I have a really Really funny story for you. I don't Alrighty. think I've ever told you, but you cannot use it against me. All righty. Okay. So when we first started, I would never use anything against you, Michael. It'd kill me. Yes. Well, but this will get back. This will. This goes back to your countrymen, so you'll appreciate this. All right. Okay. So when we first started, of course, if you type in the website or the URL, it's too busy, gals. It's a unique name, so we should come up first, mm -hmm. right? But we weren't anywhere else yet. You know, we were kind of just starting 11 years ago. So the second thing that came up was a website called Two Busty Gals. Well, I was going to say Two Busy Gals could be a couple of hookers, too. You never know. Thanks. <laughs> so Two Busty Gals came it. second. <laughs> two Busty Gals come second, right? Really? Yes. Holy stone the crows, really? Right. So right. we all now know if Mark was looking up Two Busy Gals, he would skip right by our website and click on Two Busty Gals. Not interested in, in that one, mate. I'm a leg man. Go uh, uh, but you would have been highly disappointed because <laughs> it actually was two ladies who craft that were from Australia and they just that was their ribald language because oh, okay. I was like, why would they call it two busty gals? And then okay. someone said, oh, you know, Aussies, they're like much more ribald. You Americans are so fussy and everything's so prudish. They're like you you act crazy, but you're prudish with your language. 
And so they were knitted or well, crocheted. Are. The Americans, that's, <coughs> that's a fallacy to me because you do a lot more behind doors than people know about anywhere else in the darn world, to be honest with you, and yet you are prudish. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can't say, we're just Aussies, just, we're straight down the line. We exactly. what we feel, you know. So it was these, they crocheted or they knitted. It was something very innocuous. It was like crafty ladies, and I don't know if they were buxom or not. Maybe they just, you know, it's like like the, if you recall years ago, if you watched British TV, there were those two fat ladies that cooked. And I mean, they were large women, and they, you know. <laughs> and that was the number one rating show, it was by the an, way. Wow, their food was good. Yes. But, so anyways. Not as bad as the ones in Sweden. They do the weather in the nutty. Can you well, imagine that? No, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I don't need to see all that. I want to know about the weather. I don't want to be looking at naked women running no, across no, the state. No, no, that's unacceptable. And what do you do with your kids? you have to pull their hands over their eyes all the I time? I don't know. Go to bed quick, quick. The news is coming up or the weather's coming up. It's only 6 o'clock, for God's sake. So that's where we realized we could control our brand by being more places. So the more social media platforms. So remember, we're doing this all earned organic. We're not paying for Google Words. We're not paying anywhere. Mm-hmm. We started a blog. We posted everything. Every day on the blog, we commented on people's blogs. Mm-hmm. We made social media platforms. Every single platform we could put two busy gals, we did, and we were active. Well, guess what happens? Then the search engine, when you put in two busy gals, we were like the first seven pages on Google. Mm-hmm. Every single thing. It's the same with uh, Business Radio X as well. Right, we work right. hard at that. Now, look, if if business owners, I don't know, if there was one new thing, mm-hmm. okay, for a business owner. Before the end of the year that you would hang your hat on, as we say, what would you advise them to implement before the end of the year? Before the end of the year. I would advise business owners to critically look at what they've done the first three quarters of the year, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So really give yourself, even though this is the crazy time, I mean, this is a lot of businesses make their entire profit in the fourth quarter, right? Like fourth quarter is what gets them through the first six months of the year. And then they eke out, you know, there's a lot of businesses. So I would say, look at what you've done and look at your customers and you've got to commit to one new thing during this season. So if you're not on Instagram, one new thing, if you're not on Instagram, get on Instagram. If you haven't explored TikTok, look at TikTok. What? If you, I know there's a new one, Mark. You're kidding. No. I'm just trying to get used to the others. I'm wrapping my brains around. I know. TikTok. Yes. Well, maybe you'll be lucky and they'll decide it is a risk to national security because someone decided, hey, this company is owned in China as if there's no other online companies owned in China. So um, it is a, it's a social media platform where you post short form video. I think I did see something about that. Uh, and, and I feel like if you watch over five minutes of it, you have to go like read Shakespeare or listen to NPR or something to replace the brain cells. You'll be sure you lost while you were there. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> word is out that YouTube has overtaken Facebook. Mm. What's, your, what's your take on that? So Facebook is con- going to continue to have trouble with a certain sector of the population. Um, Because of their business model, right? The one thing it's wonderful for is people staying in touch, isn't it? Absolutely. All around the world, friends, contacts. Absolutely. What did we ever do before that? A letter took how long? God knows what. Phone bills were too high. I don't think I would have any knowledge of most of the people I went to high school with if it weren't for Facebook. Yeah, it's amazing what catches up with that. So I think it's never going to go anywhere. I mean, there's always, like, there's a larger portion that's saying we're not going to use it. Mm, But from the point of view of spending your uh, media budget for marketing as a small business, and you're trying to grow, am I going to put my money now on Facebook or am I going to look elsewhere? Well, we're not big proponents of putting your money anywhere. In other words, I say invest. If you don't have time to write content and have someone manage it, you invest your money in paying someone to do that, whether that's an intern, whether you go to the library and take free classes, whether you hire us, there you have a dozen options in town. Um, I've never been a big proponent of paying for the ads on particular platforms. Um, it can be successful, most people don't have the budget for it. You no, know, the no, peop- you don't. The people I know who you've got are to in- compete with these massive corporations. The people in my industry Thousands that are doing ads, mm-hmm. they're like they're doing hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand dollars worth of ad buys a year on Facebook on one platform. Oh my god! For a couple companies, yeah. right? So if I'm Jane and, and I, what would they be making on that? The old traditional seventeen percent for the agency type thing. 
Do they get paid that much to do placement of, of ads for, for Facebook? They may. That's they a may. lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. That, that, I mean, it's, maybe not that much. It might not that's, be that much, but yeah, you know, they have contracts. Cheap. They write the ads. They do the ads. For most small, if you're if you're under three hundred two three hundred thousand dollars a year, right. you, you, there's to me that's just throwing money out the window. What do we see on deck for two thousand and twenty for businesses and digital digital marketing? Jessica Badowski. What are we seeing on 2020? Um, so you've just, if your customer is under 35, you've just got to be on, you've got to get that. You can't be screwing around anymore and not have an Instagram platform. All right. So under 35, Instagram. You've got to be on Instagram. And that's short videos to the point, right? Video. It can be video or a, it, it, a photograph. It could be still. Yes. So the message is on the stills. And yes. how long does it last? Five seconds, what? No, that's, you're thinking of Snapchat. No, on Instagram, Sorry. it's there. It stays there. Mm-hmm. All right. The story is for the day. So you've got to be creative. You've got to be creative, or you've got to find people who are creative. Mm-hmm. Um, that's with that one. What, what? Uh, the other thing um, I'm going to say again is you've just, you've got to go look at TikTok and see if that okay. is going to overlap. TikTok, uh, so when we talk about video influencers, TikTok is rapidly encroaching on the influencers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So that's the kid that everybody wants to see the kid and Mountain Dew pays him to drink a Mountain Dew because he has 2 million followers because he plays video games or his skateboard jumps in front of cars or, you know. Uh, yeah, this sort of thing. Yes. Okay. Interesting. All right. Yep. So, so let's yeah, talk- I think, and the other thing we always tell people is social media is not a comprehensive answer. Social media is part of a marketing strategy, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I'm a great believer of that. It's not the end on bill. Right? No, it, it's part of a marketing strategy, but you still got to, whatever it is for you that's the door knocking, the belly to belly, the meeting people, um, traditional podcasting, traditional radio, traditional TV, mm-hmm. traditional newspaper. You know, it, if you want, like, if you're in Green Valley and you want to connect with their market in Green Valley, you better be mm-hmm. taking ad, ads out in the paper because it's a 60 plus community mm-hmm. and they still read papers. Yeah, you still got to look at all that jazz. It's Absolutely. like a, having a mix of everything just about. If they want to contact you, the easiest way I still think these days is a website because uh, at two in the morning I might want to be in my pudgies and I want to check out this Two Busy Gals business. So www.2tobusygals, or uh, one sentence, dot com. Uh, LinkedIn, the jazz was linkedin.com slash Two Busy Gals. And the Twitter URL, tweet, tweet, tweet. That was www.twitter.com, Two Busy Gals, TikTok. We have an account on TikTok. You do already? We haven't posted anything on it, but we have an account. TikTok, the wall is dark. It's yeah. Dark. What are pudgies? Pajamas? Yeah, p- pajamas. Pudgies? Pudgies. Pudgies? Pudgies. Yeah. So you mm. learn something. You listen to Mark Bishop's hosting, <laughs> you're going to learn a new Aussie word. <laughs> Facebook, oh my God, dot com slash two busy gals. Yep. It's two busy gals everywhere. Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Slash. Com. How does that work? WW Instagram. Oh, that's a typo. I was going to say, to busy girls. <gasps> a typo. A typo. How dare you? Listen, you're wonderful. I think you're marvelous. I think you're terrific. I like you too, Mark. I think you're fabulous. And and it's a credit to you, really. I mean, you're a very sick girl. No one knows about it. And you work so hard. I don't talk very much about it. And you don't talk much about it. And you just do your thing and you help others. And I think you're like me. We get a real buzz when we see one of our clients succeed. Oh, yeah. It's the most thrilling experience. Are you kidding me? It's awesome. You know. And I've got some clients uh, who are doing so well at the moment, having their own show. Sure. And uh, guests coming into the studio that... Uh, they're doing, and uh, one of them has done so well with her show that she's been able to purchase two other agencies. Nice in uh, in a very hard industry. In the six months she's been doing it, so there you go, Jessica Badowski. Thank you so much for allowing me to be host on your show. Sure. Thank you. I think you know we just answers a lot of questions, and if people want to know more, and that's you know just here's another piece of our marketing strategy. We have a podcast, and if people want to know more about us, and they're mm-hmm. like, "We're go oh, go to episode twelve, and you'll find out how we started and everything about us." And that's exactly right. And when I uh, get this produced and done correctly, it'll be sent to you via link. Absolutely. Of which you will do what with it? Oh, we will share, share, share. We put it on our business page on LinkedIn, my personal page on LinkedIn. I have a public profile, a Too Busy Gals profile, and a personal profile on Facebook, all three. We have business profiles on Instagram, um, and we can also, you can even put an image with a link um, to on Pinterest. There you go. 
Uh, and you could too, www.tucsonbusinessradiox.com. What's the X for, Mark? Well, that's all the extra stuff you get. Social media, all sorts of giggles. Talk to me about it. Let's find out if we can help you with your business. In the interim, Two Busy Gals will be back next month, hosted by Jessica Badowski with a wonderful show lined up of special guests. Thanks, Jessica. Good luck. Thanks, Mark. 